All right. Thank God for another opportunity to get back in the Word. Thank God for those of you that are here in person, Anointed Word of Faith Church, as well as those of you joining us online, Facebook, YouTube, or anywhere on social media. Uh, we're going to pray, and uh, we're going to get started. All right, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you because your word works. And we thank you, Lord, that your word is eternal. So it, work, it works regardless of how the situation looks, regardless of how we feel. Um, your word brings results every single time when faith is applied to it. So I pray, Lord, that you would speak a word tonight through me that is easy to be understood, that opens up the eyes of the understanding of those who hear, that it would come forward in excellence, accuracy, and boldness, and be confirmed with signs, wonders, and miracles. Now, Satan, I break your power in the name of Jesus, and I declare that this word will go forward unhindered by you or any of your camp. In the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for it, Lord. I take it and I have it now. Amen. 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 Glory be to God. All right. Um, hmm. I'm going to hold off on, on that. Um, uh, real quick, uh, before we get into it, let's pray. We're going to pray for anybody that is experiencing any kind of uh, COVID-19 symptoms, okay? Let's pray. Just agree with this. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that healing is the children's bread. It belongs to us. We have a covenant with you, and I appropriate that covenant tonight, Lord, for everyone under the sound of my voice that is in this covenant that is experiencing symptoms of sickness, pain, disease, or COVID-19. COVID-19, I break your power in the name of Jesus. I cancel your assignment in this place against the people of God in the body of Christ. I declare that you are defeated. Lord, we praise you and we thank you right now that healing belongs to us. And Jesus, we forgive right now. Any step out of love, any strife against anyone, we let it go. We declare that we are in love now. We're cleansed from all unrighteousness and love is in us. In Jesus' name, we thank you for it, Lord. We take it. We have it now. Amen. Now, if you have symptoms that persist after that prayer, then you're going to need to stand on the word to get relief. Standing on the word to know how to do that, you have to have some, at some point be able to recall what we've been preaching here. You've got to know how to use it. So that's the importance of making sure that you follow along with what's being preached because you need to be able to use it. For situations like this. Does that make sense? Okay, moving right along. How's everybody doing tonight? Glory be to God. Have mercy, Jesus. The power is working. Glory be to God. Well, it's working in me. We are going to move pretty quickly through this text. Uh, because, uh, through this subject, because we got a few things that I need to get out before um, Sunday. Uh, really quick, by way of, announce of announcements, I want to mention uh, the week tentatively, right? All right, this is not 100% set in stone, but I believe the week of the 22nd um, is the week uh, that we're actually going to be out, um, that we will have a guest speaker that day. Uh, Sister Chelsea and myself will not be here that day. So the week of the 22nd, uh, that's going to be Sunday and Monday of that week. If somebody can um, find that on the calendar, let me know when that is. Um, that'll be great. And we'll get you further details. The 22nd of August. My apologies. Yep. 
23rd and 24th. 23rd and 24th is when it is, Sunday and Monday. Uh, if that changes, we'll let you know within the next day or two. Again, that's not 100% set in stone yet, so uh, we will let you know. But uh, in August, it'll be that week or the next week, we'll let you know. And then for those of you that have joined us online, that'll still be broadcast live online as usual. Okay? Also, this Saturday, the 25th, we have our friends and family picnic coming up. Again, I want to mention um, that while we are excited about having a good time and fellowship, we absolutely will be practicing social distancing. So if you have a mask, um, you're free, you're welcome to bring it. If you don't, we will have them for you. Um, if you would prefer to bring your own lawn chairs and so forth, you're welcome to do that as well. Although we will have some things out there for you uh, in that regard. All right, so I want you to keep that in mind. I want you to understand that by practicing social distancing, you are not anti-faith, okay? Faith cooperates with natural law. We're going to get into that, especially the laws of the land. If the law is passed and says uh, you don't enter into a public place without a mask, you don't enter into a public place without a mask, okay? The anointing doesn't work. Uh, over that. So we do believe in obeying the laws of the land unless it contradicts the word, obviously. If it contradicts the word, we got a problem, glory be to God. Something <laughs> must change, all right? So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, those of you that are considering coming back to church here, we are practicing social distancing. If you decide to come to church and you want to wear a mask the whole time you're here, that is perfectly okay, okay? Uh, and so and we do have those here, as well as hand sanitizer and the sanitation of the actual facility here, okay? All right, I believe that's all we got. I'm gonna move now. Now, uh, if you can turn over with me, let's go back to Genesis, the first chapter and the 29th verse. And we're gonna pick back up kind of where we left off yesterday. Uh, I want to recap some things here that I think are really, really important. Now, uh, let me say this. The subject or the series that we've been in has been entitled the uh, Being Empowered to Prosper. And uh, the concentration that we're dealing with is referred to as the blessing of Abraham. What do those two have to do with each other? Well, Adam was created with the power to prosper or increase in every area related to his existence and his assignment. Well, when a man applied faith to a promise being made to him that he was empowered to prosper, the power to prosper became known as the blessing of Abraham. All right? Now, that blessing of Abraham we determined yesterday is something that doesn't just automatically work for a person because he's born again. It's something that has to be what? Entered into. So it has to be entered into on purpose or another way of saying that is it must be activated. Now I never knew that. First of all, out of a lot of years in church, I never once heard about the blessing of Abraham, not one time. And I certainly never heard how to cooperate with it or get benefits of it uh, in my life on purpose, okay? So we really want to deal with the necessity of uh, cooperating with God because I want to mention this one thing about a covenant. Understand where a covenant with God is concerned, you are a, you are a son or daughter you are a servant with ownership rights. Did you get that? Yeah. So in religion, you hear predominantly the gospel preached from the context that you are a servant. So it's all about you serving God. Well, when you start walking in the blessing, you start operating as a partner to God. Yes, it is possible. 
And as a partner to God, you see that Abraham, the guy who this blessing is named after, he was known as a, or as the friend of God. And when you are operating on a partnership level with God, as opposed to just a servant level, then the level of assignment is greater, manifestation is greater, authority is greater, jurisdiction is greater, and increase in your personal life is amazing, okay? So you want to live up here. You don't want to live down here. Now again, you hear me make this statement uh, all the time, and I want to make it again, glory be to God, that so Christianity, if you live in survival, Christian living, I want to be really, really extra right here when I make this statement. Christian living, when you live regular Christianity, is the most boring, miserable, confusing lifestyle you could ever live. I'd practically rather do anything else than be a regular Christian. Yeah. And uh, we have a lot of people that you know, sort of that backslide and, and turn away from the Lord or uh, Christianity is more of a pressure point than liberty. Uh, and that's because they haven't heard or haven't experienced the blessing. The blessing is what makes life worth living, let me tell you. You know, the blessing is what makes you having money and a great career great. Because yes. peace is with it, all right? When you just have a good career, uh, but no peace, a lot of money, but no peace, you're incomplete. You, you need the wholeness, shalom, nothing missing, nothing broken, and that's the context of the blessing, all right? I don't know what's going to happen in here tonight. As soon as I step behind the podium, the anointing just really shot through my right hand, glory be to God. I don't know why. But we'll see. May not be nothing before you hold it to it. Glory be to God. May not be nothing. All right. So nobody may not fall out, but either way, we're going to move forward. All right. Now, verse 29, Genesis 1. If you can remember, put your eyes on this. Revelation comes when you put your eyes on the word of God. Now watch this. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herd bearing seed. Now, the context of this verse, we talked about a little bit of it yesterday, is you notice right after God empowers Adam to prosper, to increase, increase greatly, to supply all the needs of the earth, patrol the earth, and dominate in the earth, the next thing he tells him about, watch this, is the law of what we refer to, and we're going to talk about more, of seed, time, and harvest. Now, the mention of seed, time, and harvest, we're going to get to that right after this, but this is the first time we see the actual law of seed, time, and harvest mentioned anywhere in Scripture, right here in this verse. Now, understand, first of all, that the blessing and I'm going to try to preach to your spirit and not just your mind, so you got to catch this. Understand that the blessing operates in tandem with seed, seed plant, and seed harvest. Okay? So, Adam's assignment to increase and to dominate in the earth was never meant to be carried out without this law of sowing to increase. Sowing to increase greatly. Yes, there's a difference between the two. Sowing to take authority over Satan. I'm telling you that there are certain addictions that people deal with that they'll, they may never get free of unless they put a seed with it. Yeah. We're going to talk about the seeds. And all of these seeds or all of these assignments were designed to work with the process of seed plant, seed cultivate, and seed harvest. Okay? Now, 
One thing that's important to understand about the law of seed time and harvest is that every supernatural miracle on purpose in your life must start with seed. Now, as I, there are about maybe three people in this ministry that was here in the beginning whom that was drilled in us when we first started this ministry. So for some of you before you came, some of us were already kind of walking in that because we were experiencing that together at the same time. Because actually the people that started this ministry, none of us had anything, glory be to God. <laughs> we were all like, we were all struggling, you know, we were all really struggling and we had to use this so that's why you notice and I thank God for that, the foundation of this church uh, are people that understand the necessity of sowing seed and tithing and so forth and uh, how important it is because we have seen supernatural miracles as a result. And as a result, we've not changed. You look at the core people in this ministry, none of them has changed their standard on giving. That None of them have, have uh, dismissed the necessity of tithing. I tell you what, glory be to God, the first uh, seed sower in my company that I ever had, you may call it an investor, was Sister Krisha. First one, glory be to God, because you know, Krisha gonna get some money. I'll tell you what, she don't care what you do. She is going to get some money. And uh, she sold into that cup, into uh, our company and reaped a significant harvest, glory be to God got back much more than she put in. Glory be to God. Now I tell you what, that's how the kingdom of God works. Whatever you put in comes back significantly more than what you put in. But faith has to be in it. So you can't just be given just to give. Now certainly seed is more than just your money. And we're going to talk about that. But now, notice in the rest of this verse right here, he says, I've given you every herb bearing seed or seed to sow that is upon the face of the earth. It's in the earth. Everything you need to increase is already here. Okay, now watch this. And uh, every tree in which is the fruit of a tree. So what you enjoy comes from the seed that you plant. So I don't live by my labor. I don't live by my work. I live by my seed. Now, uh, when I was on the road, when I was on the road, I, oh, I can move around now. Glory be to God. I got some new equipment up here, Jesus. I can move. Have mercy. Now, uh, when... Uh, I was on the road, I started to understand this principle. And uh, where I came out of, the, the music that I used to listen to, the music used to always talk about chasing money or getting to the money. And for me, that was a big thing for me. You could maybe make the case that my identity was really connected to it. So where I would conduct myself with friends and family and make statements to them and say, Man, if, if, and excuse my abonics, but I would talk just like this. Man, if you ain't getting no money, man, get away from me. That's, that was my mentality. Like, man, if you're not getting any money, you are a lame. Like, stay away from me. And I, and I would really pride myself on this. You know, Chelsea used to get on me all the time. Like, you just, you know, you know that you don't have a lot of money when you keep the majority of it in your pocket, okay? <laughs> Women, if you're looking at dating men, if they keep all their money in their pocketed wads, you know that that's all they have. <laughs> it's probably at most only a few thousand. Now I'm telling you. Now if you press them, they'll try to make the wad bigger, then they'll fake you out. So you, you know, don't, don't try to push them too hard. But I'm telling you, uh, it, it, that logic is the total opposite to how financial increase actually works. Because as long as you chase money, as long as you chase opportunity, you are a slave to it. Money 
was not designed for you to chase. Money was designed to chase you. Glory be to God. One woman of God in, uh, in this city that really opened me up to finances years ago, she said, honey, I'm not working for money. My money is working for me. Woo, I never forgot that as, in my life, yeah. hearing that statement. And she's a prosperous woman uh, to this day. And now, so when you're chasing money, you are forgetting about the law of seed, time, and harvest. That in order to get my needs met or to get a harvest, I must sow. Okay? Now watch this. Here's a good note to have right here. The sowing of your seed, watch the end of this verse. To you it shall be for meat. Did you get that? To you... The seed that you shall, that you sow shall be for your meat. What do we mean by meat? It is the one the translation of this word right here in the Hebrew, one way it's translated is it's for your food and consumption. So there's a portion of your seed that does two things. Number one allows you to accomplish your assignment. God assignments are accomplished by seed, tithe, and harvest believers. People that operate or cooperate with the law of seed time, seed plant, and seed harvest. Does that make sense? Now, those same people, as a result of using that system, get a surplus or an overflow in their life. And you know why they get it? Because it's something about when you submit to that law of seed time and harvest to where you don't trust in money anymore. Yeah. You know, provision is not your idol or your God. God is your God. You see that? So you're not going after the money. You're seeking first how the kingdom of God works and seeking God and his righteousness or his right way of doing things first and then watch how the law works. All these things are added to you. Amen. Not go get, I always say, I always say, I talked to, uh, I talked to somebody the other day and this conversation, and believe it or not, this conversation comes up a lot. You know, when you, in the holiness church, you know, at least in my church, because not everybody in the Holiness Church thought this way. Um, but my pastor, and I thank God for this, always told us, he said, you don't, you don't build your life around your job, you build your life around your church. Now, my spiritual father, Kenneth Copeland, says, he says, you pick a church, and then your increase will be there. That's right. As opposed to picking the increase or the survival method and then finding the church. That's how you end up away from your assignment. Wow. Now your assignment is connected to your prosperity. It's connected to your meat. True prosperity in the kingdom requires a cooperation with one's assignment. And you can't walk in your assignment without observing the law of seed, time, and harvest. Now, I'm living this. Glory be to God. Let me tell you how we got this church. We have been looking for a church building. We were in the library. You know, everybody thought we was crazy. Glory be to God. We'll never get out the library and so forth. But there were about three of us, three or four of us that didn't care. Glory be to God. We would still declare it. Some of us would say, Brother Church, Sister Bella, Sister Cresha. So tell me, we would be, we would declare it over and over. We didn't care what it looked like, and uh, we knew that we were getting close. Watch this to harvest time when the uh, library would no longer allow us to do what we wanted to do. Actually, they passed some sort of ordinance that said, as a church, we weren't allowed to even take up ties in the church in the library anymore. Yeah. 
You know, I think that shit may be a little bit illegal to a degree, but we didn't fight it. So we knew the harvest time was coming. Now, we're looking for a building. We've got everybody. I've got my secretary looking for it. I mean, uh, Chelsea and I are looking at everybody. If they see a building, they're suggesting buildings, you know, <laughs> suggesting crazy buildings. Yeah. You know, and, uh, <laughs> that the Lord said, no, I do not go in there. <laughs> and uh, at the same time, we're looking for a price point. Now, let me say this. Before we came in this building, let me just give you a, a startling revelation. We couldn't afford it, glory be to God. Now, yes, we had a surplus of money, maybe more money than what the average individual in our position would actually have as a church, but the blessing was operating on us, so we expected that, but we had to think long term. You know, every month, paying bills and everything that goes along with the expenses can we afford that? We really couldn't afford it. Couldn't find a building searching everywhere. Well, one day we went to a service, and uh, Chelsea and I, and it was actually uh, Faith Life Church, Gary Cassie's church. And uh, the man of God had given a testimony about how they were in this similar situation, and they were looking for property to open up their second campus as a church. And that the story that they told was identical to what we were experiencing. Couldn't find the building, yada, 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 needed the funds for it, so forth and so on. Well, he started talking about strategy over effort. And he mentioned how they had sold, S-O-W-E-D, $100,000 into the anointing into a ministry that had been getting results and for this building and two days later they got the building that they were looking for at a phenomenal price well when I heard that after having been taught and understood the law of seed time and harvest you know what I knew what Chelsea and I knew uh oh we got some good ground now here's the key with sowing seed so where you want to go. Giving to the poor is great, but what you give to the average poor person on the street doesn't get you the same harvest as sowing into the anointing or the work of God. Don't sow into soil that does not have the nutrients to produce what you're believing for. Does that make sense? Don't sow into soil or uh, ministries even that preach the opposite of faith or where you're going. You get very, very, very little return. Okay? Now, so when we see that, what we did is now they had sold that from the church, from the ministry. That $100,000 came out of the ministry account. So we knew as pastors, the Lord said, I want you to take out of the ministry account. And we knew we had to sow a significant seed because we had a significant need. And we'll get into why that's important. It does matter what you sow. One writer said, I will never give unto the Lord what didn't cost me something. Yeah. We're going to talk about why because your heart is in that. And so we took a we went to the church account. And we took a significant amount out and we sold it. Well, two days later, glory be to God, we got the call about this building that you're sitting in right now and got the exact price that we're looking for. And needless to say, we can pay all the bills, glory be to God. Have mercy, Jesus. We haven't missed not a one, even with the shutdown and coronavirus, we haven't missed anything. Now, isn't that good news? Glory be to God. Strategy over effort is what the law of seed time and harvest will produce in your life. Does that make sense? Now, for us, that sowing was concerning my assignment. As a pastor of a church, I didn't need the building for me. 
I already had a, a building, you know. I needed the building for the assignment that the Lord gave me. So I'm not only sowing seed for my own need, but seed is also for my assignment. And for you, it's both. So you've got to care about your assignment. Now let me tell you this. Anything that you are attempting to succeed in, your businesses, your, uh, your jobs, anything that you are doing to increase in, there is, it is an assignment. Every assignment you have, there is an anointing available for you to increase. And seed, time, and harvest is always going to be a part of it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, turn over with me really quick. Turn over to Genesis, the 8th chapter. Move over there really quick. Because I need to prove this a little bit more, glory be to God, to get you some revelation over to you right here. Have mercy. I just feel like running right now. I don't even know why, but the joy of the Lord is my strength. I just may run. Say it again. Well, I don't know. Uh, Sister Chelsea is telling me something. What do you say there, Chester? What do you say? What do you say? Don't tell me what he say. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. That would be the guy. The sound is it the sound? Oh, you do got a, a hit on the sound. We're we're having some issues with our sound. It's what? Oh, this could be this. Oh. All right. Hopefully this it gets better, guys. All right. I think I'm rubbing up against the microphone. There, that may be the issue. But the microphone is still good. It's a new one. It's good. All right. Now, look at this verse right here. Look at uh, the 8th chapter. And I want you to look at verse... Um, verse 18. Genesis first chapter or eighth chapter, I'm sorry. Actually, let's go up to verse 22. Let's just pull from right there. Verse 22, eighth chapter, verse 22. Thank you guys for letting us know about the volume. Now, watch this. We're talking about the law of seed, time, and harvest. We mentioned about what it is, seed plant, seed time for cultivation, and then seed uh, time for harvest. Now, it's important to understand, really quick, I left this out, all three of those are events where your manifestation or your miracle is concerned. Yep. All right? If you're using faith, seed plant is one process. Seed cultivation or seed sowing, seed plant or cultivation, and then seed harvest are all three separate events and sometimes a process that you have to engage in on purpose to get results, okay? Now, I know um, we haven't heard a lot about this in regular church, but it gets extremely interesting. Verse 22, after Noah comes out of the ark, all the earth is brand new, everything has been destroyed and now redone, God makes a covenant with, with Noah and says, Man, no longer will the earth ever be destroyed again in the way it's done, it has been. No longer will all human beings become literally extinct. That will never happen again. And you've heard about the rainbow, right? That was a sign of that covenant. Now, right after he says that, look at this. Verse 22, he says this, while the earth remaineth, all right, or while the earth exists, seed, time, and harvest. Are we convinced we're talking about the same law? Yeah. Seed, time, and harvest. Now, you notice seed, time, and harvest is being mentioned as a covenant matter. 
What is a covenant? An agreement between two parties right here. Again, it's between man and who else? God. Okay? Now watch. When you're operating under the law of seed, time, and harvest, God is your covenant partner. Did you get that? God is your covenant partner. Now watch this. Now, as long as the earth exists, seed time and harvest, two different things, and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease. Now watch this. What he's saying is from this point forward, the earth, as long as it is in existence, this includes the new earth that will be after the tribulation period, so forth and so on. After the earth is redone, watch this. I'm talking about, let me just say this, you understand that heaven is not, where you're going to live forever in heaven, you understand that it's not just in the sky, right? You, you get that, right? Yeah. Heaven is described as New Jerusalem. New Jerusalem is a city that is shaped like a cube, and it's the same measurements everywhere, up, on the sides, on the top, it's the same all the way around like a big huge cube, and literally it sits where Jerusalem is sitting right now, and it is situated in the earth as the capital city in the earth. Does that make sense? Yeah. That is heaven, New Jerusalem. Now, there's going to be other aspects of heaven during this time, or there's going to be operation of even other planets operating outside of just the earth and where New Jerusalem is. There are going to be those believers that live in New Jerusalem, they're going to be, that can go in and out as they please anywhere in the galaxies. That, this may sound crazy, but I'm just condensing all of my research and giving it to you. Now, there will be those believers that will not live in New Jerusalem. They won't be in hell. They won't be in the lake of fire. They won't be in purgatory, because there's no such thing right. as purgatory. Right. But they will live in the earth. They will have to journey from the different places in the earth that they live into New Jerusalem to eat uh, the tree of life in order to sustain life. Now the difference between those two believers is the, is the difference of what they did on the earth. Alright? Obedience in the earth equates to living inside that city. Lack of obedience in the earth, even though you're not going to hell, causes you to have to live outside of the city and come in. Now, if you live outside of the city, will you come in? Yes. You'll come in no matter what. And how long will you do it? You'll do it forever. Will you still live better than if you were in hell? Yes. But you will notice that there is a difference between your provisions and where you live as opposed to where people that are living in that city actually have, okay? You'll notice a property difference. There will be a difference where, where a property ownership is concerned. The Bible literally refers to them as mansions. In the Greek, it's synonymous with a mansion in the English. They are real mansions. And they're constructed right now. They're being built in accordance to what you are doing in the earth right now. Wow. What you're doing in the earth is dictating what you're going to have in heaven. You're building that right now. Does that make sense? Wow. Now, where New Jerusalem is concerned, the, the interest... Ah, well, son, I hear you, Holy Ghost. I won't go there just yet. Ah, well, I want to go there so bad, but I can't. I can't. All right, let me get back to my text. I get it. I won't go. Now, my point is this. After the rapture or after the world has come to an end, theoretically speaking, 
the earth will still be operating under the law of seed, time, and harvest. Does that make sense? Because as long as the earth is in, in existence in whatever context, this law is going to govern. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, God himself operates by this law. This law is a law established in what? In what kind of in what realm? The spiritual or the natural realm? This law is a spiritual law that governs, that governs the natural realm. Does that make sense? Spiritual law that governs the natural realm. By the way, what happens in the natural dictates or affects or moves what is going, what happens in the spirit goes first. It moves what's in the natural. But what happens in the spirit is activated by those inside of the natural realm. Does that make sense? So my seed is sown in the natural realm and it's activated in the realm of the spirit or gives movement to the realm of the spirit and it translates back to the harvest in the natural realm in every area of life. This is the same way. Healing is concerned. This is the same where your finances are concerned. This is the same where sin is concerned. So all of this sin is under the law of seed, time, and harvest. You sow sin. Sin eventually, when you continue to do it without repenting, it cultivates. Yeah. And then you reap a harvest. Remember this law? For the wages of the seed plant of sin is what? Yeah. Death. Seed time and harvest operating can never be escaped. All right? Now, watch this. So as long as the earth is in existence, this law is going to dominate. And those who uh, live on top of it are those who cooperate with it. And to cooperate with it, you need to hear it. So that's why I'm preaching it, glory be to God, so you hear it. Now, move over with me to Mark. Now, here's where it gets good, glory be to God. Have mercy, Jesus. Should I just run right now? Have mercy. Mark, the fourth chapter. Now, I want you to look at Mark, the fourth chapter, and I want you to take a look at Verse, let's see here. Where do you want to start, Holy Ghost? Verse 26. Fourth chapter, verse 26 in Mark. Now remember, we're talking about the power to prosper, that when a man applied faith to it being promised by God became the blessing of Abraham. And now as a New Testament believer, once I got born again, I entered into that blessing, but that blessing needs to be activated, needs to be entered into in order for it to work in my life. And one of the first things we understand to get it to work outside of our faith, to enter into it, hearing it, uh, uh, believing it, saying it, acting correspondingly to its instructions, is to understand now how it works. Now let me say this, just to make sure this is clear. Before you get to using this law of seed time and harvest on purpose, on purpose, you need to enter into it first. Yesterday is how you enter into it, what we said yesterday. You gotta hear it, you gotta get an assurance of what you've heard, you've got to say it and act correspondingly to that information. Okay, that's how you get manifestation. Okay, now, once you get into the kingdom and get into this blessing, now the fun stuff comes. Now you start learning how to drive the remote control car, glory yeah, yeah, be yeah. to God. Now you start learning how fast the pretty car Sister Aletha just bought, Aletha just bought, how fast it actually goes. You see that? You get in this thing first, and then enjoyment starts. Enjoyment doesn't start really until you enter in. Do you get that? 
Yes, I'm born again. I'm saved. Thank God I'm not going to hell, but I need more than that. I've got to get in this system in order to get results. Now, watch this. Verse 26. Now, this is Jesus talking. And remember, Jesus is a old covenant prophet. Jesus was restricted from preaching the gospel to people outside of the Jewish nation as a whole. He was not allowed to go to any other nation and preach the gospel. The gospel, according to prophecy, had to be preached to the Jewish nation first. So you see a lot in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus is preaching. Uh, he is fulfilling the law. In other words, in order for the Jews to recognize him as the Messiah, they were told that there are certain things that he would do. So his mission is to complete and do all those things. And they've not yet acknowledged him even to this day. But they will at some point acknowledge him. And then they will be used to evangelize the rest of the earth after you and I are gone in the rapture. No, we don't talk about this end time stuff enough, but you guys seem to be hungry for it, Lord, so that's why I can't move and get off of it. But they will be used to populate the rest uh, of heaven uh, after you and I are raptured out or snatched away. Again, we're snatched away. Why? Why are we snatched away? Why, is the, why are we snatched away? Anybody? Too dangerous to be here. The rapture is to snatch the church or the ecclesia out of the earth because it becomes too dangerous for them to be here. All right, That's one of the central focuses of the meaning of the word rapture or the definition is to snatch away, to snatch away from impending danger. Now after we're gone is when those, uh, that is when the Jews as a nation, Jerusalem, that's when they will acknowledge Jesus. Now look how prosperous they are, and they have not yet even acknowledged him. Right. <laughs> and that's because of the covenant. That's because of him yeah. keeping his part. Wow. You see, he keeps his part even when you don't keep your part. That's why you can fall off and come right back and jump right back into the blessing. Yeah. Isn't that good news? Yeah. Woo! It's about to make you run before I tell you what. Yeah. Now watch this. Now, Jesus says this in verse 26. And he said, so is the kingdom of God. Context, he is about to talk about how the kingdom of God works. Now, what is the kingdom? What is the kingdom of God? Anybody? Government, authority. Jurisdictional authority. It's the jurisdictional authority of heaven that is operating in the earth. Now, in heaven, do you remember the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. That kingdom came there on earth. Watch this. As it is, or the same way it is in heaven. All right? The government of heaven is the same government uh, in the earth where the believers are concerned. Yeah. Now, there are two governments operating in the earth right now. There is the kingdom of heaven, or the kingdom of God, and then there is the Babylonian government. And that is run by Satan. You are born into that government until you get born again. You are translated out of it. Okay? Now, that government is the economy of heaven. In heaven, is there any sickness and disease? No. no. Is there any poverty? No. no. Is there any depression? No. No. Is there any relationship problems? No. no. Those things don't exist in heaven where well, that same government is here in the earth. But in order to draw from it, you've got to 
cooperate with it. You've got to know that it exists and it exists under the blessing of Abraham. That's how you access that economy. Yeah. And again, yeah. I remind you, because as a pastor, that's what I have to be, the great reminder. You don't automatically benefit from it. You've got to enter into it. How do you enter into it? Somebody give me one of them. If you ain't going to talk up, don't even answer, glory be to God. You got to hear it. That's one. Okay? Yeah, that's that's vague. You got to hear it. You got to get... Well, what did we talk about yesterday? You got to hear it. Then you need an assurance of it. You got to get convinced of it. Some of you have heard it, but you're not convinced of it. If you were convinced of it, you'd do like my granny said you'd do. To know is to do. When your actions don't follow what you heard, you're not convinced that what you heard is true. You see that? Now, you've got to get an assurance of it. What's next? What is it? Says Chris, I know you got it. I know you got it. What is it? What is it? You've got to say it. You've got to say it even when it doesn't look like it. And then, what's the last one? Corresponding action to it. You'll never reach the avenue of corresponding action until you've done the other three. You won't begin to know what to do until you've done those other three. Now, you're in the kingdom. That government is what Jesus is talking about right here. And he's telling us how it works. Watch this. And so is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground. Watch. Watch. And it should and should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring and grow up. He knoweth not how. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is stating right here that the kingdom of God is operating under the law of seed, time, and harvest. Did you get it? Yeah. Yeah. Because this was a question. Jesus needed to make sure that the believers knew that, hey, if you want to get results from heaven's economy that's here now, you are going to have to cooperate with it and understand that it is operating under the spiritual law of seed, plant, seed, time for cultivation, and seed harvest of what's been cultivated and planted. So my success no longer, as a believer, you, you know my DNA is different. It's changed. Do you get that? My DNA is different. It's changed. It's because I've been changed from the inside and out. I, I'm not programmed to work the way I did before. Yeah. And when I try to get results and maintain, you know, sanity in life without cooperating with how my DNA is now operating, yeah. then what I'm doing is kicking against the prick, the Bible says. Wow. The, I, what I'm doing actually is frustrating myself, making myself miserable, setting myself up for disappointment. You've been purchased. Now, you can choose. You, David had a revelation of this because he operated closely with the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. And he said, wow, as long as I have a covenant right here, even if I make my bed in hell, you're with me. Yeah. Yes. I, you can make your bed in hell and it still wouldn't change the fact that you have been purchased by blood. You are another man's property. Now that's why for me, I tell you in my home, I mean this, for me as a pastor, this is a very sobering subject and borderline and a natural scary for me because God always reminds me that Al, those are not your people, those are my people. And if you don't handle them right, I'll be to see you. Now that's very sobering. 
people have died standing in this position for not handling you right. Do you understand that? Yeah. It's extremely important. Now, so the kingdom of God is operating under the law of seed, time, and harvest. So now I've got a new way of living. Everything and every benefit that I get associated with my assignment and my supply. There it is right there. My assignment and my supply. Life consists of your assignment and your supply. They work together. Your assignment may vary, but every single one of us have one. Are you living without your assignment? You've got to become assignment-minded. You don't really find it until you start looking for it on purpose. Yeah. Now, one of the best ways to start identifying that assignment is take baby steps towards it. You know where the first baby step preparation for assignment is located? In your church, glory be to God. You are first of all assigned to a church. Every believer. Once you got born again, your name was written on a church somewhere. Wherever you are, wherever it is, your name was written and assigned somewhere. And in order for you to obtain maximal satisfaction and fulfillment and success in this earth and that reciprocate after you leave this earth, you have to find that place. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? That's awesome. Dad, well, you got to control all that, man. Why you got to you know, have all that right say so? I mean, my goodness. Yes, that's the way it works. Now, if you've not been born again, imagine, you know what, uh, like Bill Winston said, if, you know, if I wasn't saved, you know what I'd do? I'd get saved, glory be to God. <laughs> you know, if I wasn't cooperating with the blessing, you know what I'd do? I'd start cooperating and walking in the blessing. Then, now. Now, there are benefits. Let me, thank you, Holy Ghost, and you'll help me say this. There are benefits to, to walking in the blessing as early as possible. It was not, let me, let me help you understand this. This is extremely important. It was not designed for you and I, even though we have done it, to wait until we're 30, 40, 50 years old to start living in the kingdom. Understand, let me tell you this, for those of us that have done that, and including myself, for a period of time, you're operating at a disadvantage in comparison to people that started obedience when they were young. Yeah. Now, when you are late in this regard, you're going to spend a certain amount of time in kingdom living redeeming the time. Do you get that? Yeah. Now, the time can be redeemed in supernatural speed, yeah, amen. particularly when you are cooperating with the law of seed, time, and harvest. Growth and restoration is accelerated when you cooperate with the law of seed, time, and harvest because now you're reaping in fields, you're reaping a harvest that is bigger than what you sold. Yeah. Do you see that? God set it up that way that when you sow little, you reap much. Wow. So you yes. remember the woman with the, the widow's might? Yeah. Well, she sold what she had, and what she had was an acceptable seed, and from a spiritual context, for, from a spiritual perception, 
According to Jesus, it was considered great, which means her harvest was great. I guarantee you that woman somewhere, even if she's not mentioned in scripture, running around somewhere filthy rich. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Clean rich. How about that? Clean rich. We got filthy rich people out here. We need clean rich. <laughs> you know, by the way, let me help you out with the money statement. You ever heard the scripture? Um, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into heaven. What do you think about that? How do you feel about that? Has that ever given you any problems about prosperity, anybody? Am I the only one? Just me and Chelsea, that's it, glory be to God. Now, you have to understand what Jesus was trying to teach these people. The eye of the needle was a doorway, a particular entrance into a city. And what happened is that if you had a camel, in order to get through that door, you would have to unload the camel, take the camel through, then come back around, back through it, grab your bags, and take those through separately. Okay? Now, Jesus was teaching the people that it's easier to do that than to try. It's That's going to pose a problem Versus if you just came through and let God place what you need on you. Yeah, that's right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. He wasn't saying that there are no riches for you over here. Yeah. He's just saying that I have riches for you that are better than what you're trying to drag over. <laughs> what you drag over, what you're trying to hold on to, has toil wow. connected to it. I have the blessing of the Lord that maketh rich with no toil added to it. That's what I have for you over here in the kingdom. Sell what you have and remember this verse. Maybe you've never heard this verse. Jesus made a statement and told one person, sell what you have and provide for yourself purses in heaven. Yeah. In other words, by selling or sowing what he had, he would have created seed. And that seed would, be, would have become way more valuable, even monetarily, than what he already had. Yeah. Do you see that? Yeah. Now, watch this. So is the kingdom of God, as if a man, so this is how the kingdom of God works, as if a man should sow seed. Now, Seed must be sown. So the next logical question we have to ask, answer is, what is seed? All right? Now, if you look up, scroll up a couple of verses. Scroll up a couple of verses, and you'll see the parable of the sower. Actually, you're going to scroll down. My apologies. Where's my verse at, Lord? Have mercy. And the sower. Let's see. Okay, here we are. Verse 14. My apologies. Now, Jesus made this statement about the kingdom of God. He says the kingdom is within you. So watch this. The government of heaven is inside of you and it's operating like a field where seed is planted, cultivated, and then harvest. Do you see that? Now, the kingdom of God is inside of you. Where is it at inside of you? It's in your, it's your heart. Yeah. Now, what gets through the heart? Through what avenues? Through the eyes of faith, church, and here, glory be to God. <laughs> through the eyes and the ears. Now, in this verse right here, look what Jesus says. The sower soweth the word. Mm -hmm. The sower soweth 
the word through the eyes and the ears and it goes to the field of the kingdom in the heart. That seed, he is comparing the word of God to seed. So manifestation of seed time and harvest starts with the seed of the word of God. So that means the Bible is now differently now. Yeah. Now what I'm doing in the Bible and looking for a seed like that, I need some seed. <laughs> Where am I seed at? Now, you know what's different when you go in the Bible to find your needs, you'll find out that you have more energy for the Bible. <laughs> Do you know that? I'm telling you, if you haven't figured it out already, if you're just going in the Bible every day you're just doing your daily reading you, you know this you know you, you're gonna get tired of that i'm just telling you you especially starting off go in the bible and find your need look at it like this the bible is a treasure chest for all of your needs first Go in there and find your needs. Did you get that? Now, every time you find your need, it's going to be wrapped in the form of a promise. Again, find what God has promised you as his covenant partner. What is available for me as a covenant partner, as a believer. That's what you're looking for. Look for the good news. Look for the benefits. Don't worry about trying to figure out the whole thing right now. Don't even, don't, don't worry about that. Go in and start finding your needs first. And every time you find it, call it seed. Now when you find your seed, write it down, glory be to God. Yeah. Write down your seed. What is it that you need? What is it that would change your life? What is it that would bring fulfillment in your life? Can you find it in this word? Go find it. If you find it, you can have it. If you can't find it, you can't. It ain't in there. <laughs> You're not going to find a crack in there, I'm telling you. It's not there. <laughs> You're not going to find it. You're, You're not going to find it. <laughs> You're not going to find, you know. You're not going to find ten wives in there. It's not in there. Ten husbands. You're not going to find any of that. You can go find one wife, one husband in there. Can't find ten or even five or two. Glory be to God. Go in there, find your need, and then sow it. Sow it in your heart by meditating on it through the eyes and the ears. Now that system right there is the beginning of your healing. It's the beginning of your finances. It's the beginning of your, your job increase. It's the beginning of the change of your family. Now, when I came into living by faith, this is what I was taught. And I'm just crazy and just used it in every area. I said, okay, and you know, I'm telling you what, you may not be like me. I have this like long laundry list. Like, Lord, you're talking about fire to see, like, I'm going to need about 10, 15, 20 of them. Like, you know, yeah. I got a lot going on. Okay, Lord, my wife, you know, my marriage is, is just this is really destroyed. I'm going to need seed for that. I'm broke. I'm going to need seed for that. You know, I had a sin problem. Don't need seed for that. Uh, you know, I, I need to. I need some more than men. I'm going to need seed for that. You know, you, you told me to start a church. I'm definitely going to need seed for that. You told me to start a company. I'm definitely going to need seed for that. My brother just went home, just was killed suddenly. I need seed for that. See, every word, depression tries to come back on me. I need seed for that. 
I'm, I'm, I'm separated from all of my family and loved ones because I'm living by faith and it gets a little lonely. I need seed for that. And I found seed for every last one of Now watch this. Let, let me show you something. Stay right there. Nobody move but me. Watch this. Let me show you something right here. Let me show you these, these, what I mean by those seeds. There it is. There it is. Right there. Can I just deviate and read some of my seeds to you? Is that okay? Can we close out that way? Yeah. And we'll pick up on this later. So, these, let, let me say this, and I'm going unorthodox, I guess here, I'm going out of the normal order that I guess I, I should be in, but I really think I'm being led of the Holy Ghost. This is, I think, what I sensed in the, in the beginning here. So, I used to pray what, you know, I was I was connected to some people that had really been in church for a long, long time, and all I ever heard about how they prayed was like these real prayer warriors that, you know, those ones that just seem like they know how to make the right sounds at the right time when they pray, you know, like, uh, you know, oh God, yeah. Father, I just give honor to you, God, and I just thank you, Lord, because you just brought me through. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> and God, you just gave me strength when it seemed like, I, you, you know, I never really good at it. Glory be to God. Now, I tried that. I really tried that. And I did it for a significant period of time. And I'm not telling you that if you do that, those of you online or wherever that, you haven't gotten any results. But I found a better way. I found out that praying the word is much more effective. So I found out, and like many others, thank God for some men and women of God who have constructed prayers based off of the word that covered every situation. And instead of going into prayer every day, every day, praying sort of how I felt led to pray, I would, guess what? Now watch this. I would actually read these prayers out loud as my personal prayer time. When I started doing that, the results went from zero to a hundred real quick, glory be to God. Real quick. And I'm still doing it to this day, and I'm not malnourished, I'm not uh, you know, unfulfilled, and I still get a lot of manifestation, and it keeps growing. So you know what I conclude? It works. It works. Now, I don't know about you, but I came out of some, some real mess, okay? So I, I needed, after I came out of those things, I needed medicine. You understand? I am a forever junkie in this regard. After you've done the things that I've done, I, I have to take medicine for the rest of my life. You, you don't get it, do you? you? You don't get it. Now, I may have to take medicine that you don't take. It's okay if you don't need the kind of medicine, but I, I need a lot of medicine, glory be to God. <laughs> You know, I, 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 you know, I need a lot of medicine. Yeah. So I learned early on to construct my medicine list. Now, this list right here, and those of you that haven't been here from the beginning of this ministry, those that were here in the beginning, they, they've seen this list many times, and it just keeps getting more and more warm, but I'm going to hold on to it, glory be to God. Now, I, I constructed this list, and each one of these were for medicine areas of after I came to the Lord, these are areas that I was still being attacked with. Okay? These are areas that I was still struggling with and things that I needed that I was just describing. Okay? The very first one on my list is thank you, Lord, that sin has no dominion over me. That was the very first one. You know, when I first got delivered, man, I would be praying in tongues, having withdrawals from powder cocaine. 
I mean, walking down the street with withdrawals, like feel like my whole body is about to collapse. And I, I mean, literally, I, I mean, it was sort of unbearable. So I didn't go to a pain clinic. I didn't go to rehab. I went to the word, medicine, seed time and harvest, and got results. So every day of the world, right now, it is my responsibility and pleasure every day in my confessions. This is not my prayer list. This is my confession list. Lord, I thank you right now that sin has no dominion over me. I read it and I see it and I've taken my medicine for the day. Now, when else do I use that? If I'm ever attacked with temptation concerning sin. In any way, you know you're not too holy to be attacked, to be tempted, don't you? You, you, you do know you'll still be tempted, right? When that temptation shows up in pictures, words, or physical feelings, you speak to it. I'm free by speaking, not by avoidance or trying hard. I'm free by speaking. Does that make sense? Now, the next thing I, I, I confess, I'm just going to read these. Lord, and, and if any of these cover your areas, maybe make a note of them and, and start using them, okay? Lord, I thank you that the windows of heaven are open to me and the blessing is poured out on me in overflow. Thank you, Lord, that I have tithers' rights. Woo, keep the tithers' rights going, glory be to God. And mercy. That's more than just my finances. That's the overflow of the economy of heaven over my total life is what's coming out of there. You know, that overflow will keep you here on the earth long. Keep you from dying early. Keep you from tragedy. You understand that? Now, you know, you'll have to appropriate that at some point. If you don't care about you living long, Satan certainly doesn't care about it. If you let him take you out, he certainly will try. Ain't no use of you looking at how long your grandparents done lived and none of that. Don't have nothing to do with anything. Satan is trying to kill. Now watch. Now, I thank you, Lord, that you supply all my needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now, this is a big one. Lord, I thank you that the years taken from me and my children are being restored to me right now. As many of you know, I have two other children outside of Ayla from a previous marriage. My oldest daughter, her name is Ariel, put you on blast if you're watching it. And my son, his name is Aiden. And the years that has been taken from us, through uh, stolen from us by the enemy, through my behavior, my disobedience, I believe God for restoration. And I'll have it. Amen. You understand that? I'll have it. Now watch this. I thank you, Lord, that my thoughts are agreeable to your will and are established by you. And that the peace of God is ruling and reigning in my heart and my mind, acting as an umpire. That keeps me God-minded where my decision-making is concerned. Lord, I thank you that in all my ways I acknowledge you and that my paths are being directed by you now. Now, Lord, I thank you that the devourer is rebuked for my sake, that the seed eaters shall not eat up my harvest, and that my harvest is coming into me when? Yeah. Now. Thank you, Lord, that you bore my griefs, my sorrows, sickness, disease, pain, lack and the curse in every form that you obey me for my transgressions my mistakes my oversights my disobedience and that the chastisement necessary for me to be whole was upon you and by your stripes i'm healed and made whole i thank you lord that the blessing of the lord has made me rich and added no sorrow or toil to it. It's working for me now. I thank you, Lord, that you give me rest. Now, this is when I was being attacked in my dreams. 
If you are being attacked in your dreams, you don't just ignore it if you're a believer. If you're, if you're not born again, you're being attacked in your dreams, you need to find a believer to pray quickly. Alright? Because it starts in the demonic realm and it is witchcraft. That's what it is. He's trying to establish a covenant agreement through fear. Dreams is where he introduces fear and gets you to meditating on it and then to saying it. And then once you say it, he has legal access to start bringing it to pass piece by piece. So you got to stop those dreams when you have to take authority over them. So when I get to that part, I say this. I say, Satan, I break every attempted agreement. This is for specifically where witchcraft is concerned. I break every attempted agreement. Every resurrected altar, there are altars built in the spirit realm. And every Asherah pole of witchcraft that you set up against me and my affairs, I break your power and cancel your assignment now in Jesus' name. Now, I wouldn't do it if it wasn't necessary to go be God. You need to do it if you're dealing with it. Do it. Don't disagree. It. Do it. It's that important. And I also say to him, Satan, you have no authority to be speaking to me in my dreams. My dreams are reserved for the Spirit of God and my Father and my Lord Jesus. You have no authority. You are trespassing. I command you to go now in Jesus' name. And then the next night if you dream it again, guess what? You get up and do it again, glory be to God. Do it 20 nights in a row if you have to. He'll get the hit. He'll stop. Because at first I was being literally tortured in my dreams. Me and my wife. You know those kind of dreams? We would have dreams where we wake up at each other like... <laughs> so what'd you do yesterday? <laughs> like, her me tell me the truth. Do you really love me? <laughs> have you, have you, is there anything you want to tell me? <laughs> Those kind of dreams. Yeah. And when one of us did that, we would say, the devil is a lie. Resist them, I'll break that off of you now in Jesus' name. That's what we're going to do, man. Right. We don't play no games about it. We don't have, we're not bashful about the attacks of the enemy. We, you know, what, well, you got tempted? What are you going to do about it? That's how we do. Yeah. Now watch this. Now Lord, I thank you for taking responsibility for what I show, for what I live, what I eat, what I drink, and what I wear. Thank you, Lord. You do a great job at it. And I appreciate it. Amen. See that? And I have no fear, no worry yeah. about those things because I've cast the care over on Him. This is my confession. It's reinforced, right? Yeah. Now watch this. I'm almost done here. Thank you, Lord, that you're making all grace abound towards me so that I'm always sufficient in all things. I'm available for every good work. That's why I don't ever have to come to you guys in the church and say, please help me. It's the will of God that I'm sufficient, not needing to depend on anybody else for anything. Now, it's a process. When I first got delivered, I tell you what, my wife and I, we put out an ad on uh, Craigslist, and we said this on Craigslist. We said, the Lord told us to build a church and build a company. We need somewhere to live. <laughs> Let us come and stay with you for room and board. No pride. We don't have no pride. Yeah. Let us come and stay with you. We'll clean the house, cook food, yard work, whatever it needs to be done. We were in the will of God, baby. That's all that mattered to us. <laughs> And uh, we didn't know we had gotten responses, but we didn't see them until it was too late. Now we're driving around, staying in cars, and finally, this young lady over here, Sister Ravella, said, Come and stay with me. You can have that basement. I said, The basement? What's the Maybe we ain't better do that. <laughs> and in my thinking, it, really, it was the most miserable place. I had a, a I had a, a condo that was like 
uh, I mean, it, it was a dream condo. It was the envy of the neighborhood, this condo that I had. We were used to so much space and living fabulous, and now I'm moving into a basement to be in the will of God. Little did I know, I was about to come up beyond my wildest dreams. Yeah. Don't think that because you make an adjustment that temporarily puts you in less than awesome circumstances, is where you're going to stay forever, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Do you know what happened when I was there? It was a blessing because I didn't have to pay any debt. Food being cooked for us, no rent, no food, transportation. I mean, it was a absolute blessing. Chelsea turned the, the uh, basement into the penthouse, glory be to God. <laughs> Turn into an apartment down there. And that allowed us to start this ministry. Had we been preoccupied with trying to figure out how we were going to live and so forth, we would have never had the time to dream. It was an absolute ultimate blessing, and I am forever grateful for it. Despise not small beginnings. If you ever talk, if you're in a small beginning, don't talk against it. Be grateful. Thank God for it. Change your confession. Do it now. Change the confession. You'll stay there if you don't become grateful. We learned that the hard way. Chelsea did not be. Chelsea had to learn it. I already knew it. I tell her that she had to learn it. She changed that confession. Things start changing for us. Amen. All right, I'm almost done here. Somebody needs this. That's why I'm going over these. And that, Lord, I thank you that every aspect of the fruit of the Spirit is working in me now. Amen. Love, joy, peace, meekness, self-control. You know, that's something you already have, right? Not that you need to develop. You already have it if you're born again. You just activate it. You already have it. Yeah. You don't need to learn to control yourself. You already have it. That's what to say that I already have self control. That's all you need to do. Just start acting like you got it and you'll get manifestation of it. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I said, Lord, I thank you that these things are working in me right now. Patience, constancy is working in me. Now, here's the one for my brother. And I still take it right now, every day. I thank you, Lord, that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Now, I take that as medicine, so that keeps me out of sorrow and grief concerning what happened to my brother. If I don't take it, within two weeks, I will be in sorrow and grief, standing right here in this pulpit. That quick, I, I, would, be, I would be messed up. You understand how serious this is? Doesn't matter whether you're a preacher or none of that. Doesn't matter. The rules are the rules. Then I say this. Lord, I thank you. I say sorrow and grief. I break your power and you have no dominion over me. I thank you, Lord, that sorrow and grief has no dominion over me. Whenever you start dealing with depression, Whenever you feel it coming on you, and you will feel it, that's what you need to declare. It's sorrow and grief. Those are personalities. They're spiritual entities. You got to take authority over them. You got to talk back to them, okay? Now, this one is a little bit for adults, okay? But I think you need to know, especially with all you single folks in here carrying on, you need to know this. Now, we will get over into teaching about marriage and singleness and how to conduct yourself appropriately with the opposite sex and so forth. But let me mention this, especially where marriage is concerned, folks online. Normally wouldn't be on here this long. I declared this. Now, sexually, I had ruined myself. Whenever you are having sexual interactions with somebody outside of a marriage covenant, you are ruining your intimacy level. 
So sex is spiritual, not physical. Now this is through this is through not only physical sexual activity, but this is also through um, um, what's the word? This is also through fantasy. Fantasy always promises you something that it can't fulfill. When you're doing so, you can fill in the blanks, all of those areas. You ruin your ability to be truly satisfied sexually. Yeah. When you are having sex outside of a marriage covenant. Now, I have ruined myself in that way. So I had reached the point where I didn't have the ability to be satisfied by any woman. I messed myself up that bad. And then I get delivered, and after I get delivered, I'm faced with these things. Like literally bombarded with them. Supernaturally, Satan had people calling us after we got delivered, men and women. So we hadn't talked to in years. Trying to send him things to our phone, anything he could do to penetrate. And I found me some medicine. Glory be to God. And here's my medicine. And I say this every day. Lord, I thank you that Chelsea satisfies me at all times. That I am intoxicated with her love always that I don't even look down the street of another woman. Woo, it's enough to make you run like that, glory be to God. Yes. Now, you know what that did for me? Supernaturally changed my affections from the inside out. Wow. Intimacy now is better than we ever dreamed possible. You've not had intimacy until you've had covenant blessing intimacy with your spouse. You've not experienced it. I'm telling you what. Everything else is a cheap counterfeit. Woo, I know I get paid dirty in the bedroom. Have mercy. We need to talk like this. You need to hear it. You need to hear it. I'm telling you what, I mean, I never drink. I mean, from a young age, I made a decision when I was like a preteen. I was like, man, I will never have a girlfriend in my life. I'm always going to have friends. And I did that the majority of my life. I ruined myself. Ruined myself. Didn't think, at one point, I didn't think I, it was possible to recover. I mean, at one point, you heard my testimony, I had... I had girlfriends all over the entire country, every city, every state, and still, and it seemed like the more I engaged in this kind of behavior, the more conflicted and miserable and confused and emotional unstable I became. That's what happens. The marriage covenant is designed to protect you from those things. That's the purpose of the marriage covenant, to protect the enemy from getting in. Yes. Glory be to God. All right, here's my last one. I thank you, Lord, that gentleness and goodness and faith is working in me now. You guys make me stay on that, glory be to God. I have to stay on that. To, I have to always say that, you know. Because when you got a lot of responsibility, boy, I tell you something, but I just... And then it didn't quit. That's what Jesse McFadden said. He said, I could never be a pastor because I'm an admitted acquitted guy. Yeah. I want you to admit it quit it and go on. I don't want to I don't want to counsel you through it or none of that. Yeah. Now I need that as a pastor. I need that because uh, uh, for my wife. And I thank you, Lord, that when I lie down, I have sweet sleep. We have no fear. We dwell in peace and safety. And here's the last one. I thank you, Lord, that I'm not sluggish about anything, but that I'm full 
of boiling energy and enthusiasm concerning the pursuit of all of my goals and dreams. Now that is some power-packed medicine, is it not? Yeah. That's awesome. Give the Lord a praise if you have received that. Everybody stand. We're going to pray. Let's let's uh, we'll cut these videos up. We'll go ahead and leave it on. That's all right. Leave it on. We'll cut it up later. Have mercy. Now I tell you what. All of this, and again, I know I've deviated from our teaching there, but. All of this is a byproduct of the blessing. And yeah, I did go a little long, but so what, Jesus? It is what it is. The blessing will work for you if you work it. Amazing, wonderful, fulfilling life is waiting on you. And it's your covenant right. Step in it. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you right now that the blessing of Abraham is our very covenant right. We inherited it by birth, the new birth, God. When we were born again, we stepped right in to the power to prosper and increase spiritually, physically, soullessly, financially and socially that you desire above all things that we prosper and be in health and the blessing causes our soul to prosper Lord I thank you Lord that you're raising up people with good conscience people with healthy thinking responsible citizens in society are coming out of Anointed Word of Faith Church right now. Dependable, integrous people are coming out of Anointed Word of Faith Church, Lord. World changers are coming out of Anointed Word of Faith Church. Resources are being moved through your precious people, God. Souls are being snatched out of the fire through these people, Lord. And the blessing is being realized through their lives, Lord. I believe that. That's my confession concerning them. I declare their greatness right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that what's in front of them is much greater than anything that is behind them. And I thank you, Lord, that you have wonderful, wonderful plans for us. Lord, I pray that in this hour, in this time, that you would continually open up the eyes of our understanding. Help us realize the magnitude of our inheritance in Jesus and his anointing. What we don't see Show us. Where we're lacking, help us to become complete. Lord, I just worship you. I give you the honor and I thank you, Lord, for these precious people. I thank you for every single one of them. I thank you and I believe the best for every single one of them. In Jesus' name, I pray for those that don't know you right now. That they would turn to you right now and say, Lord, I turn from a life of sin. I come to you, not just because the wrong that I've done, but that I can't be whole without you. I want to be in your kingdom. Receive me. Come into my heart. Make something out of my life. If you prayed that, I believe you received it tonight. I believe you got new life. Let us know. Email us. Call us. Come to see us. In Jesus' name, we thank you for these things, Lord. We take them and we have it now. Amen.
Ouça a prática.